This video is a follow on to Direct Proportion 1, so if you haven't watched that video, I suggest you watch Direct Proportion 1 first. Um, we're going to talk about the use of squares and cubes and cube roots in direct proportion, um, which are slightly more difficult than the ones discussed in the previous video. So, sometimes when you're doing direct proportion questions, um, the two quantities that are directly proportional um, might not be described as, for example, a and B or X and Y okay sometimes you're going to have a squared or a cubed and you need to know how to deal with that sort of situation so what we're going to try to do is try to explain where that sort of situation might arise so I want you to imagine that we've got um, square um, patches of carpet that need to be recarpeted uh, square patches of floor that need to be recarpeted, and um, the cost of recarpeting those square patches is what we're got, what we're after. So we're going to look for a relationship between the cost of um, carpeting them and the uh, length of the side of the square. Okay. So let's have a look at these four different bits of carpet. We've got a 1 by 1, 2 by 2, 3 by 3, 4 by 4. So they're going to cost different amounts to depending upon how big they are. I'm going to call the cost C and the length of the side X. And let's have a look at the relationship between those two things. Let's imagine that you go to um, your, your friendly carpet fitter and um, you look at um, this one, you, you ask for a quote, and you say, look, I've got a 3 by 3 patch uh, that needs recarpeting. How much is that going to cost me? And he says to you, right, that's going to cost you £45. Okay. How can we work out what the cost of the other carpet areas is going to be? Well, let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got £45 is the cost for... 9 meters squared. Okay, now I'm going to start off with this formula here for direct proportion. It's direct proportion because C equals K times by something else, but I've used X squared. And the reason I've used X squared is because the cost of this carpet is going to depend not upon the length here particularly, but the area, 3 times 3. So the cost of this carpet is proportional to the length squared, the area of this square. So let's have a look at what that uh, means. Well, the cost in this case is £45. The value of K we've yet to determine. And the X squared here is 3 squared, which if I work it out on the next row is... 9. So what that's saying is that for this 9 meters squared here, 3 times 3 is 9, for this 9 meters squared it costs 45 pounds to have that recarpeted. Let's see if we can work out this value of k then. This value of k is going to be 45 divided by 9, which is 5. And that corresponds to five meter, sorry, five pounds for every meter squared. We've got nine meters squared in this this little patch of carpet, and it's costing forty-five pounds. So that's five pounds for every meter squared. Let's write that back into our formula as we've been doing on the previous video. C equals five x squared, like that. So now I've got a formula which is going to link together my two um, variables, the cost and the length of the side. Okay. Remember, that the reason it is squared is because we are dealing with squares of carpet here. The 3 times 3 um, makes the 9 meters squared that we're looking for. So if you look at this square patch of carpet that needs recarpeting, this is 4 by 4, so the area of this one is going to be 4 squared or 16. The area of this one will be 2 squared and the area of this one will be 1 squared. That's where the squared is coming from. So this relationship that we've got now is, this, this formula that we've got now, can be used to work out 
the cost for the other carpets. Let's just have a quick look at those ones then. So the cost for the smallest carpet will be £5. The cost for the next one, the 2x2 two two carpet, will be 5 times 2 squared. 2 squared is 4, so that's 5 times 4, which is 20. The cost for the third one, we've already worked known, that was £45. And the cost for the fourth one is 5 times 16, which is £80. So you can very easily use that formula to work out the cost for different size bits of carpet. OK, let's have a look at what happens um, when you've got some questions to answer on this sort of topic. So here we have the cost of serving tea and biscuits varies directly with the square root of the number of people at the buffet. So before I even start answering the questions I can start to imagine what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up a formula uh, that varies directly word tells me that I'm going to use a formula with a k in it um, and I'm going to be using the square root of the number of people. Let's just read on. It costs £25 to serve tea and biscuits to 100 people. How much will it cost to serve to 400 people? And for a cost of 37.50, how many could be served tea and biscuits? So, let's go with that first sentence there. It says, varies directly. So I know that I'm talking about... Um, let's have the cost C is equal to K multiplied by... It says the square root of the number of people at the buffet. So I'm going to use the square root of n to represent the square root of the number of people at the buffet. It's really important you read the words and don't just go s crashing straight in with c equals kn. That would get you very few marks indeed. Okay, You need to make sure you're reading really carefully the square root of the number of people at the buffet. So let's put some numbers in here. Um, we know that the cost is £25 when you're seating 100 people. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually just work out that square root of 100, which is 10. And then we're going to divide by that 10 to work out the value of k, which is 2.5. And the last thing we do before we start part a is just rewrite that formula with our value of k included. And that's now our formula. Right, now let's have a look at part A, shall we? Part A says, how much will it cost to serve tea and biscuits to 400 people? So let's use this formula. The cost is going to be 2.5 times the square root of the number of people. N stands for the number of people. In this case, it's 400 people that we've been asked to cater for. OK, so you simply either type that in on your calculator or work it out. I make it £50. Don't forget to include the units in your answer. OK, part B. Let's have a look at that one now. There it is. For a cost of £37.50, how many could be served tea and biscuits? So again, we're going to use this formula. We're going to use the cost is 37.50. So C, 37.50, equals 2.5 times by the square root of N. And again, this time, we're going to work out the value of N. So we need to try and solve this problem. Well, let's start by dividing by 2.5. 37.5 divided by 2.5 gives you one, uh, 15. Sorry. So I'm dividing by 2.5 to get my square root of n. That tells me that my square root of n is equal to 15. And then to get rid of that square root, you need to square both sides. And I make 15 squared 
225 people. Okay, so as always with direct proportion questions, we've started with a formula, we've substituted values in and found the value of k, and then we've used that formula with its value of k to answer two questions. Let's have a look at this one here. It says, in an experiment, the temperature in degrees centigrade varied directly with the square of the pressure in atmospheres. The temperature was 20 degrees when the pressure was 5 atmospheres. Then we've got two questions to answer in the usual format. So let's have a look. We've got uh, the temperature, which I'm going to call T, varies directly, so it equals K times by the square of the pressure. Square means squared, like that. So my first original formula is going to be that, and then, as usual, I'm going to work out the value of K. So start with the temperature that we know. We know that when T is 20, the value of P was 5. So 20 equals k times 5 squared. Just work out what that is. That's 25, that 5 squared. And then you've got to divide, haven't you? 20 divided by 25, which I think is 0 0.8. Just check that. Yeah. So, as usual, rewrite out the formula again. T equals, remember k is 0 0.8 times p squared, and we're now ready to answer questions a and b. Let's have a look at question a. There it is. What would the temperature be at two atmospheres? So we use the formula, temperature equals 0 0.8 times by 2 squared. The pressure is going to be 2, so we're putting in p equals 2. That's 0 0.8 multiplied by 4, which is 3.2 degrees centigrade. Let's have a look at part B now. What will the pressure be at 80 degrees centigrade? So, um, this time around we can put 80 in the place of the P. We're working out T... Sorry, forgive me, made a mistake there. It says, what will the pressure be at 80 degrees centigrade? 80 degrees centigrade is the temperature. So we're putting in 80 equals 0 0.8, and the pressure is what we're trying to work out, so we have to leave that in as a letter for the moment. OK, how do we solve this? Well, we start off by dividing by 0 0.8 on both sides of the equation. 80 divided by 0 0.8 is going to be, is that 100? Yes. equals p squared, and then I can square root both sides of this to find my pe pressure, which is 10 atmospheres. That's it. Basically, you've got a si pretty simple thing going on there. The only thing to look out for are these words, where it says the square of the pressure or where it says the square root of the number of people. You've really got to pay attention to those words so that you can make sure that you get your formula right to begin with.